you know the challenge with this one is we're being asked to play very lyrically very musically at typically a very soft dynamic in an area of the register that's going to be let's just say a little bit less familiar than maybe if it was down like a fifth if everything was between like low b flat and high b flat okay that'd probably be easier the challenge with this is going to be making sure that you maintain that same great quality of sound that you play with in that b flat to b flat range and then expand it above where that's at. So <clears throat> we want to think great focused air right down the center of the lead pipe. We don't want to use tons of pressure. We don't want to mash the mouthpiece, mouthpiece on the face. We don't want to do anything where we're just trying to like smash our entire face into the mouthpiece. You just need to trust your air, have it move extremely fast, make it be extremely focused. Now, one of the ways we can work on that is by buzzing simple everybody's got a mouthpiece especially right now if you're currently at home in quarantine maybe mom and dad are working you know from nine to five and you're not able to play you know your instrument during the day grab your mouthpiece a lot quieter but you can still get a lot of work done <laughs> see if you can buzz along with the melody if you have like a keyboard or something like that buzz along with that because if you can do it and make it sound good on the mouthpiece at the end of the day the instrument is just a gigantic amplifier if you're doing the right things here with your air <clears throat> and with the mouthpiece as long as you're putting the right buttons down on the finger we're gonna be a-okay now what I'm sure a lot of your eyes gravitated to when you first saw this was the second page or second half depending if you're using the book or just a PDF um, where you have trills you have grace notes like this is stuff that we don't normally do or at least we haven't done much in band yet especially as low brass instruments we're not always asked to be you know these beautiful colorful you know uh, just arpeggiating figures we're just like boom 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 you know for five minutes and then we all get a standing ovation we go home and have our ice cream uh, so as you work through this first things first understand is I would learn this personally if other people disagree with me that's perfectly fine I would learn this without putting in the grace notes or the trills for now. Learn the structure of how it's going to go. So, once you're comfortable with that, once you're able to do that, then we can add all the extra stuff that is in there, both the trill and the grace notes. So, I think another, maybe not misconception, but I think as low brass players, we see other instruments when they trill, and we really feel like anytime there's a trill, it should always be, it's just really, really, really fast. And there's a time and a place for that. If you're able to do that here, cool. If that's how you want to do it, awesome. I ain't want to tell you how to live your life, but it doesn't need to be anything big right now. You're, you're going in eighth grade. We understand you may not be able to do all up and down the register yet. It can literally be just going from... B flat, A flat back, up to B flat, back to A flat, and then we just do the grace note. G, A flat, G, it doesn't have to be anything crazier than that. Now, if you feel comfortable doing more than that, awesome, but start slow, give us just a simple bayam on that trill, and then as you're comfortable with that, go to bayam, add a second, bayam, add a third, 
the biggest thing is you just need to make sure that you stay within the construct of time. You can't just add three beats because you're doing something really cool. It has to stay within that beat. Now, you'll look further ahead towards the end of that phrase. We have four grace notes in a row. Now, the nice part about this is you are coming up to the end of a phrase. You're coming up to that fermata. You also have a rollantami. So you can approach this a couple different ways. One easy way to do it is to just kind of slow it down. Bum, ba, da, 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 ba, da, da, and just almost treat it like eighth note with uh, 30 second notes. Now, if you want to go really bonkers, I'm sorry, 16th notes, not 30 second notes. If you want to go really bonkers, you can treat it like 30 second notes. Bum, ba, ya, dum, ba, da, da, but it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be overly flashy to be effective. Plain and simple. Bum, ba, da, 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 ba, da, da. As long as you get all the notes, as long as that energy is driving us forward, and as long as you arrive at that fermata with a beautiful sound, it doesn't have to be flashy. So, last thing, got to make sure you're working with subdivision on this. So get your metronome out, get that subdivision going all the way down to the 16th note, uh, and really, really feel what that's at. As you get more and more comfortable, you can take that 16th note away and just have the 8th note subdivision. As you get more and more comfortable with that, take the 8th note subdivision away, just feel the big beats, and then record yourself without a metronome, and then grab your metronome and tap along with it. Listen to my mouthpiece, not a metronome, but you get the idea. All right? So, this is how I would approach it. These are my views on this. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And as always, happy practicing.